Well, hello, here we are again, day four already. Are you enjoying this journey with Max and Wendy? <laughs> well, I am. And yet again, as I said before, I've done this before, but um, every time I do this, and, and sometimes even I'll just take one of these uh, topics or one of these um, journal prompts and do it again and again. It's so fun to discover what's in your heart. I hope you join me. Um, it's easy, dare I say. Um, two things. You don't have to be a writer. You don't have to be an editor. Um, you don't have to be anything. But you do have to remember one thing. No thinking. I don't want this to come from your mind. That's, I just don't do it. Right, Max? Don't do it. Just don't do it. I want you to, when you, when you, I want you to write from your heart. Because as I said before, your heart knows. Um, <clears throat> but when you write down a journal prompt, like I'm gonna, what I'm going to give you today, and then just keep writing without thinking, you'll just be, um, again, shocked, amazed, thrilled with the revelations, the lessons, the... Oh, can't wait to share with you today. All right, so let me read from Roberta Thames' book, How to Write a Memoir in 30 Days, Day 4. Thinking about your past and about the important decisions you have made in your life, please write three essays today. If you can't do it all today, it's okay. Just write when you can. doesn't take that long. Ten minutes. Not, you, ten minutes. You can find ten minutes. I know you can. Each will be just one or two pages. And each will begin with one of the sentences below. Please refer back to your day one life summary if you need to jog your memory. Essay one. In that moment, I realized that. In that moment, I realized that. Essay two. If only. If only. Lesson three, or essay three. It started out as an ordinary day, but then. It started out as an ordinary day, but then. I just Let me encourage you. It's so exciting to see what's hiding in your heart. Would you like to hear a little bit about what I wrote today? Just one of them. I'm so excited. I'm so excited because here I am, here many of us are, um, during this crisis, you know, figuring out where do we go from he here? You know, what now? What next? What can I do? So that's like in the back of my brain and, and floating around inside my heart. So I chose to start with, in that moment, I realized that. In that moment, I realized I was born for this time. All that I had worked through, all that I had suffered, all that I had endured. Crisis of faith, crisis of self-esteem and self-worth, crises of life and death. Was I mentally ill? Crisis? I had a few, as you can tell. <laughs> Just touching the top of the surface. In that moment, I realized it was time to reach out, share my story, and possibly, hopefully, encourage others during their times of crisis. Unexpected, unplanned, unwanted, offering hope and help. I don't know. The universe is telling me, but it kind of feels like maybe there's a book in me. Maybe something, you know, maybe all that I've been through will be helpful for somebody else. Anyway, that's my story. Oh, oh let me see what she says in the end. She, always, she tells several stories. And again, I really strongly encourage you to get this book. I have it on a Kindle. You don't even kill a tree. Just get it on your Kindle. Um, so... And the examples really help open up your, your heart. Um, so she writes her finishing paragraph of day four. How are you doing? 
with your writing? Inquiring minds want to know. I like to know. Please share. Let me know. Private message me. You know, it's so much. Here's something um, I learned as a child. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you know, when Candy was so sick, um, is joy shared is doubled and sorrow shared is halved. So, you know, it's important to share. You have to share with me, share with a friend, you know, but it's important to share. So she writes, um, is investigating your past interesting, scary, fun? I want to talk a little bit about fun for just a second. So I was talking to my sister today. And um, fun. We're Irish. I'm telling you, growing up, we laughed. So, you know, craziest things. Like, there's a bunch of us around the table cleaning up dinner. Always extra kids in the house. And my mother picks up a raw egg and just tosses it to somebody. And then pretty soon a game evolves. Everybody comes, joins, and we're just tossing this egg around the table and across the table. And I never was much for catching or throwing. Can't hit the side of the barn. And I, I just can't, I never catch anything. I just, I close my eyes. Huh. Anyway, so it's going round and round and round. And my father drove a semi tractor trailer. And we could hear him rumbling up the road. We lived in the country. Could hear him rumbling up the road from a distance. And we had all windows along the side of that dining room. And uh, so as he came, it just increased the incitement. My father would have loved the game. So it wasn't like, we just, everybody started throwing the egg faster and faster and faster. And I happened to be standing behind me was the living room. And I just reached back and shut the door because I just knew what was going to happen. And sure enough, this egg comes flying at me and I got scared and I ducked. And the egg just went right down them. <laughs> My father came in, we were all shocked and then laughing and I just thought... And maybe that was one of the first times my intuition told me to do something and I listened to it and I was glad I did. But anyway, we were Irish and we laughed and played and it didn't, and it just, it didn't cost any money. We didn't go anywhere. We just were always laughing. And then I, um, I got married at 18 and a couple of months after I was married, uh, my mom and I was the oldest. My mom and sisters came to visit, and we were sitting inside. We had a mobile home. We were sitting around the table laughing like we always did, you know. And my new husband, again, I'm only 18, he stomps up those metal steps, pushes through the door, and he he yells at me and he says, "Stop that! You're a married woman now. Act like it." I can't laugh at 18 years old, an Irish 18 year old besides, I'm not allowed to laugh. I should have known then trouble was coming, but I was young. <laughs> and then so many years later, um, uh, oh, then. my mother always says God has a sense of humor. My second daughter, her name was Candy. She had contagious laughter. I have a grandson, same way. He could be in the next room. I could be on a Zoom call with my daughter. He's in the next room. I don't, even, I don't see him, and I don't even know what, what's going on. But he'll bust out in that belly roll laughter and just, if you don't laugh, you're at least smiling. You know, it just, it's contagious. It's contagious. Anyway, so long story short, Candy died when she was 13. And I've written on this before. The laughter died. You know, and so many years I was sad. I didn't want to laugh. But um, but then I missed it. And I knew deep in my heart, nobody told me, I knew that laughter was healing. We actually have scientific studies now that prove it. <laughs> but um, I wanted to laugh again. And um, I said something to the other that was in therapy. And he, anyway, another story. Um, I said something to the therapist about it. And he said, well, you ever seen that picture? Because I would walk in the door and sit right down and, you know, focused on myself. And he said, have you ever seen that picture behind you on the wall? And I said, no. And I turned around and it was Jesus laughing. <laughs> 
And I had I had said to my husband, I just need to laugh, you know. And he said to me, well, Christians are supposed to be somber. So I'm telling the therapist what he said, and that's when he points out this picture. And he says, where does he find that in the Bible? And I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I've been read through that Bible a good number of times, and I never saw it. <laughs> and I don't believe he ever read the Bible. So anyway, but God spoke to him directly. I digress. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> But anyway, so life goes on, you know, 10, 15, 20 years later. Actually, it's been 26 years since Katie died. Um, I just, you know, every day my heart would cry out for laughter. I need to find my humor again. I need to, and actually the last few weeks with all this trauma that's going on, as I go to sleep, I usually watch comedians or something funny or you know, because it's healing. And what you're thinking about as you go to bed, your your brain will dwell on. So that's an important little tip. So one of the little tips will be in my memoir, possibly. <laughs> but anyway, um, and I, I just started thinking a few months back, well, more than a few months back, that I really wanted a puppy. It's very lonely here. And this was before all this started. And, um, and so I found one. I found Max. And, uh, my sister said, as soon as I said his name is Max, she said his name is Maxwell. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Why am I crying? I'm telling you a happy story. <laughs> Max has about wellness and happiness. And, and I kept, as I've talked to my sisters and my friends, you know, I would, or just think, you know, Max makes me laugh every day. He wakes with joy every day. You know, not all dogs are cut out of the same cloth, and this one happens to be very happy. And um, and so every day, I, if I can, I share somebody some funny thing that he did, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, well, duh, it's the answer to your prayers. <laughs> you wanted joy, you wanted laughter, and here you are laughing every day. I sent him to you. <laughs> so anyway, I digress, but... You want to write about laughter. You want to write about joy. You want to write, you know, you want to write about some hurts. Do it. Because just like sharing, um, we share joy, it's doubled. We share sorrow, it's halved. And as uh, I've read to you before, from Patricia Thames, um, it's also very psychotherapeutic. It, en it enhances the the joy, the blessings, the gratitude, or it diminishes it, lessens its hold on. So write, please write. Will you do that? Will you do that with me? It's for you. Don't do it for me. I'm not going to read it, look at it, grade it, or anything. I'm just here hoping to make your day a little tiny bit better. Mm -hmm. All right. Be well. Stay safe. And Max, you going to come say goodbye? He's always just sitting right next to me. <laughs> so we have two chairs. I have my chair, and then Max has his chair. He sits right next to me. Right? Yeah. Bye-bye, everyone. Talk to you again soon. Have a good day.